Welcome back to our Critical Compliance series. In this edition, we will focus on expert controls compliance and how it interacts with anti-discrimination laws and provide an overview of best practices as outlined in DOJ Civil Rights Division's recent fact sheet. U.S. export control laws and regulations, such as the Export Administration Regulations, the EAR, and the International Traffic in Arms Regulations, the ITAR, place restrictions on the export or release of certain goods, software, technology, and technical data to those who are not U.S. persons. For natural persons, U.S. persons generally means U.S. citizens, U.S. permanent residents, admitted refugees, or persons granted asylum. Hence, employers may need authorization from the appropriate federal agency to export, in other words, share or release export-controlled items to workers who are not U.S. persons. On the other hand, the Immigration and Nationality Act, the INA, prohibits employers from basing their hiring, firing, or recruitment decisions on the worker's citizenship, immigration status, or national origin, unless required by law. The ITAR and the EAR do not require employers to limit jobs or recruitment to U.S. citizens or workers with other citizenship or immigration statuses. In short, the two laws can create challenges for companies dealing with export-controlled items who have to consider an employee's citizenship to determine the need for export authorization, but at the same time cannot make employment decisions on those bases. And some companies have run afoul of the INA in seeking to comply with U.S. export control laws. So what should companies dealing with export control items do in order to ensure that they comply with both the INA and applicable U.S. export control laws? First, companies should separate the Form I-9 process from the export compliance assessment process. Second, companies should limit export compliance assessment for positions that would have access to or require working with export control items. Third, companies should conduct training on the INA requirements for the company personnel responsible for hiring and onboarding processes. Lastly, when recruiting to fill a job, avoid stating in job advertisements or otherwise telling job applicants that export control regulations require applicants to have a specific citizenship, immigration status, or national origin. Also, avoid using the ITAR or the EAR as a reason to limit jobs to candidates with certain citizenships, immigration statuses, or national origins. And finally, when discussing export control requirements with job candidates and current employees, make clear that U.S. persons include more than U.S. citizens. For questions on this topic and other export controls and sanctions issues, please contact members of Arnold and Porter's Export Controls and Sanctions team. And please stay tuned for another edition of Critical Compliance.